Hi, I'm Paul Potratz and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to focus on big data. I know you've heard the term, but you probably don't understand exactly what is it, how does it happen, where is it stored, but most importantly, how can you use it as a business owner, a marketer, a salesperson? I'm just here to tell you, if you are a business owner, big data is something that you really want to focus on. So I have it behind me right here. And as an ad agency, we have access to hundreds of millions of records of individuals in any specific area. I mean, within a five foot radius, we can find out really who's in that area, what are they interested in, but I'm gonna get into that. So how is big data gathered? It's gathered in a number of different ways. It's gathered by your history. When you visit a website, all of your information is captured when you visit the website. So I know you've probably seen all the notices about the privacy notice and you're having to accept those lately. And that's because of the new law that went into effect, especially in Europe. So that's where everyone's safeguarding, trying to be safe. But when you visit a website, you just have to think for a moment that what other apps, what other websites are open? For example, you have Facebook open, so it has all that information. You have LinkedIn open, Pinterest, any of the social media sites or even your email, that ties to you as an individual by your name, your email address, and anything else you've done online. So if you've gone to Amazon, made a purchase, all of that information is being gathered, whether you're on a, a laptop, a desktop, a mobile device, a tablet, or, or whatever it is. So just think about this for a moment, that you'll, you have your mobile device, your smartphone, and you have different apps, but your smartphone is connected to the, your account, meaning where you pay your bill, which is connected to your social security number, which is connected to your credit cards, everything's connected. So by you having that smart device that also has a GPS in it, there's a lot of information that's being gathered, not only your credit information, your credit score, but your physical whereabouts. So I'm gonna show you some of the information being gathered on big data, and I'm gonna talk about why it's so important as a business owner that you are in the big data game. Because if you're not, you're really advertising like it's 2005. And there's no reason to be advertising like it's old school because everything, and I say, it, well, I'll just show you, everything's being tracked. So as you can see on the screen, and I'm fuzzing out stuff for privacy, but we're gathering all of this information. And the first thing is an ID. This ID is specific to the mobile device. One's phone, their, their smartphone has a number and there's different things that can be called an IMEI number, which is really, it's a unique identifier to that mobile device, your mobile device. So let's say that you have your smartphone, your iPhone, everything you're doing is being tracked back to this unique ID. So kind of think about it as a social security number for your mobile device, it's tracking everything. But let's assume for a moment that you give that smartphone to a son or daughter and then they restart it with a different phone number. Well, this number will change. So now it's tracking their behavior, their interest, it's tracking them specifically. So it's very spot on. So you can see what's happening and how we're gathering this data. I wanted to pull a list of people that were interested in purchasing a vehicle. So this is a list of individuals that have physically visited a dealership's uh, website, physically visited a dealership's you know, uh, physical lot, like their dealership that they walked onto the lot, drove on the lot, or they went and they visited an auto trader, a cars.com, a, a car guru, or a competing dealer's website. So this is just a, a quick poll of a list of individuals that are showing the behavior of wanting to purchase a car. So I have their first name, their last name, I have their address, city, state, zip. Okay, great. Uh, that's not so hard to get, right? Well, it is because none of these individuals have filled in a lead form on any given dealership's website. So I'm pulling everybody in the Schenectady, New York market within a three mile radius of a specific carrier route is what I'm doing. So it's very specific. So I'm gonna scroll now and I'm gonna show you some of the data that I'm gathering here to kind of give you an idea of what all's happening. So there's a lot of different codes that go to a key to correspond, but you see right here, I have latitude and longitude. So what it's telling me is when I pulled this list, where is their physical whereabouts? So for example, this individual right here could be walking through Walmart when I pulled this data. So I know exactly where they're at. So you kind of think about, well, why would that be important? That's kind of creepy. Yes, I know, but why would it be important? Well, let's say for example, that where Walmart sells tires and my campaign is going to be a tire campaign to sell tires. So if anyone comes into these coordinates, the latitude and longitude, I could make sure that I'm serving them a specific message 
based on whatever, wherever they're at in their physical whereabouts. So for example, Walmart, tires, I wanna sell tires. Whenever they hit this area, I start serving ads to them. If they're doing a search for a tire, then they can see my client's ads. So that's one of the first features. So let me go ahead and scroll some more. And you'll see it's pulling the census track, so any census information. So what big data really does is it, it pulls all of these different resources, uh, census data, insurance data, home ownership data, I mean, the credit card usage, and it just continues on. So again, census tract, but you can see I'm gonna scroll a little more. And then right here is uh, census median household income. Uh, do they have a landline? It's surprisingly, there's still a lot of individuals that have a landline phone. I have their phone number, I have their gender, I have if they're a homeowner, their date of birth, their date birth month, their date birth day, and their exact age. So let's keep on going. This is gonna be a while, so I hope you're ready for a long video, but I, I encourage you to watch this video because all of this information is being gathered on you. Don't get too freaked out about it. Think about the opportunities of you as a business owner, as a marketer, as a salesperson, and how you could leverage this data to be able to do smarter marketing, uh, be more successful, more profitable. So again, we're talking about ages. I got household income. I have their net worth. I have their credit range, their credit lines, uh, education level, and their occupation. And again, the codes, I mean, there's a key so I can know exactly what they do. So, all right, let me scroll some more here. And it just kind of goes and goes and goes, all right. So occupation, occupa are they a business owner? How many kids do they have? Is there kids present in the household right now? What are the kids' ages uh, as far as male, female? And then keep on scrolling here. So more about kids. It gets really specific about kids. So you just have to think for a moment. If, uh, let's say that store that sells uh, toys to kids, or not to kids, but sells toys. Toys R Us, that's the name, I was stalling. Could you notice that? But if Toys, of, Toys R Us was really using big data, they probably wouldn't have gone out of business because their marketing could have been a lot smarter, very targeted, and they wouldn't be, write this down, spraying and praying. And that's what a lot of marketers do is they spray and pray. So again, information about kids, it just keeps on going. And then right here, marital status. Uh, what's their length of residence in their home? What's the dwelling type? How many adults are in the home? What's the household size? What's their home market value? How many generations are in the home? Adults, male to 18, 24, and all that. And which brings kind of something really interesting. A lot of times when you're doing a media buy or you're trying to decide media, you're buying media like an 18 to 24, 25, 35, male, female, and an income. That is so old school. And that's really something you do not want to do because it's interesting of how the generations, oftentimes you can find a grandpa that would be in the 60s or 70s that has a lot of the same behavior of a female that's 19 years old. And just think about that for a moment. What I mean by that is the grandpa is on Facebook, doing a lot on Facebook so he can see his grandchildren. And there could be a 19 year old girl that's on Facebook a lot. Granted, they're looking at two different things, but I'm just talking about behavior. And that's what's happening when you just look at age ranges. So again, a lot of information about the adults and the age ranges, it just continues on. So you can get very specific and very dialed in on this so you're not wasting your ad dollars. So I gotta keep on going, adult 75 plus, and then uh, do they responder, uh, buy of purchase, buy membership clubs, so are they part of Costco? What are they part of, Sam's Club? Do they buy value priced? Again, this is a code, it will tell you what's their interest. So for example, since this is an auto list, it will tell me, do the, does the individual prefer to buy a lease? Do they prefer to lease a vehicle, buy a vehicle? And if so, where do they want their payment range? How much money do they normally put down? All that behavior is being tracked. I like this part. Do they buy, uh, right here, do they buy women's apparel? Do they buy petite sizes? Do they buy plus sizes? Do they buy young women's? And we'll scroll some more. Do they buy men's apparel? Uh, do they uh, buy men's big uh, plus sizes, big sizes, uh, young men's, kids? Uh, do they buy health and beauty products? Do they buy cosmetics? Do they buy jewelry? Do they buy luggage? So you can kind of really see if whatever your business is that you can get very specific. If you're a jewelry store, there you go. Now you can target the individuals instead of just, and I use this a lot, spraying and praying. Do they have the premium Amex? Do they have the regular Amex? Do they have the 
Discover, Discover Premium Regular. Do they buy premium gas? Do they buy regular gas? I mean, you have to think about it. When you're going to the gas pump, you slide your credit card in and out, you're pumping gas. Are you normally the premium gas or the regular gas? That is being tracked. When you go to the grocery store and you use that little value card, that little thing on your keychain, all of the items that you've purchased, that's all being tracked. That's big data that comes back. Even the coupons you get from the grocery store is specific to the products that you're buying. But all of that information is being tracked because are you the individual that will pay the extra money for, let's say, uh, I don't know, Heinz ketchup versus the generic store ketchup. All of that is being tracked. So there's no reason to waste your ad dollars any longer because all of this data is available. And again, this is the records that we get daily that we can go into a specific area and find out whatever we want to do. Is the person just recently purchased a home? Are they looking in for insurance? Are they looking to purchase a, a home? And I mean, it just kind of continues on. A lot of credit card information here, so I'm going to keep on going here and then let's see where we're at. So credit card user, did they just recently get a credit card? Do they have an investment account? Are they an investment person? Do they look for investments? Do they invest in real estate? So again, it's a lot of information here and it just keeps on going and going. So uh, do they invest in stocks? Do they, uh, do they read the financial news? Do they read uh, money? Do they, so it just keeps on. Are they investing in foreign? Do, do they actually, investing in property, like buying property. Uh, keep on going. And then here you talk, see, are they a donor? Do they mail order donor? Donor charitable? Do they donate to animals? Do they donate to arts? Do they donate to kids? Donate to wildlife, environment? So, and I know you're probably saying, okay, I get it, Paul, I understand. But no, I want to keep going because you probably don't really understand. And if you do really understand, then you'd be doing your marketing strategies different. You would be working with a company that is talking to you specifically about this information. So a lot of this, again, donator, donations, veterans, religion, other, uh, keep on going. Parenting, single parent, do they buy infant apparel? Do they buy uh, toys for, like learning toys for their kids? Uh, baby care, kids school, I mean, they're just young adults, so we just keep on going here. And you can see how all of the stuff is filling in. Again, it's coming from various sources. Do they buy pet supplies? Do they buy horse supplies, cat supplies, dog supplies, gerbil? I mean, all of the information, everything you do online is being tracked. Uh, other types of pets, career, uh, working, occupational, working women. I mean, it just keeps on going. I like this part. Uh, do they buy magazines? Do they buy books? Do they do audio books? Are they an avid reader? Do they read religious? Do they read scientific magazines again? Do they audio books, uh, history, military, current affairs? I mean, you can even see if someone is reading the National Enquirer, if they like that, that type of stuff. Are they in the science space, uh, gaming? I mean, it just keeps on going. Uh, entertainment, DVD videos. Actually, I have a friend that's really into CDs and DVDs, and uh, I won't go into that. All right, break it up a little bit. So here we go. Music, uh, are they an avid music listener? Do they collect movies, cable TV, video gaming, satellite dish, computers, PC gaming? So again, you can see how it just keeps on going. Do they go to the theater? Are they into the arts? Are they into the museum? and it just keeps on going. Do they collect coins? Do they collect stamps? Do they collect antiques? Do they collect sportsman memorabilia? Uh, are they into automotive? What is their hobby? The, are they a DIYer? Will they actually have somebody fix it? Uh, do they like woodworking, uh, photography, aviation, house plants, uh, crafts? I mean, it just keeps on going. Gardening, do they buy gardening? Do they? So it just keeps on going, photo, video, are they buying it? Do they smoke? Do they smoke regular cigarettes or do they do the vape stuff? I mean, so again, do they cook? Are they into wine? Are they into gourmet food? Uh, natural foods, it just keeps on going. Casinos, I like this. So do they travel to a casino or do they stay local for a casino or doing online casino? <sighs> Cruises, so there you go. This is big data, and you have to think about the opportunities that big data really offers you. So if you're doing Facebook advertising, 
you can take this list of big data and let's say for example that you're a real estate uh, brokerage or you're a jewelry company or whatever it is you can extract that data of the big data you can upload this into the back end of facebook and you could only advertise to those people that would be interested in your product or your service so your cost per sale comes way down your conversion goes way up you're generating a better quality lead for your salespeople, so they're not getting frustrated you have less turnover because the leads that you are providing are real people that are really interested in your product and service versus spraying and praying. And that's what TV advertising is, that's what radio advertising is, that's what print advertising, even though you're saying, oh, I'm advertising on the news talk station because I'm more likely to get this type of person. Again, that's spraying and praying. And the worst part about all of that type of advertising and most Google search advertising is it really is a spray and pray advertising platform versus knowing exactly what somebody's interested in. And we know that based on everything from where they're physically located, how often they physically locate a or at a specific location, what they're doing on their credit card, what they're doing online, what their apps they're downloading, what they're looking at you can get very specific. So that's this week's tip. Now you understand what big data is. And the next time somebody says, oh, what is big data? You can say, let me tell you about big data and everything that's being tracked. So now do you understand why you know, Mark Zuckerberg is in all of the, you know, in front of the jury or whatever it is and they're questioning. But here's the thing, this cannot be stopped unless you throw your mobile phone away, get rid of your credit cards and get rid of your car because Every new piece of technology is tracking your whereabouts. But I don't know, you're probably like me and you're signing up for you know, Netflix and you're using those coupons, you're using the credit cards, using the smartphone, you're using Alexa and everything. And I'll leave you with this final tip. When was the last time that you had your mobile phone in your pocket or you had it laying out on your desk or a table? It's probably right now. Every word you say and every word the person around you says is being listened to by those devices. And that just helps big data, helps companies like ours to be able to market to you more effectively, smarter, and uh, basically get you to do business with the companies we want you to do business with. That's this week's tip. See you next week.